Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, we were studying chapter uh, 10, Godly Counsel. And uh, we, we looked at uh, uh, how God uses godly men and women uh, to counsel us, to guide us, to lead us, to uh, you know, confirm things in our life. And we need to receive from them, but we need to be careful uh, the kind of people that we receive counsel from. And I mentioned who are the kind of people that we need to receive counsel from. And also we, uh, when we are uh, given counsel, you know, we need to receive it, even if it's not aligned to what uh, we want, we like, we're happy about, you know, or even if the counsel comes as a correction, okay? Uh, having said that, you know, if you have got the parents, then it's an honorable thing to, you know, receive counsel from godly parents, you know, uh, even if they seem to be uh, outdated with technology, it doesn't matter you know receive counsel from godly parents uh, which is very good very important like uh, we read in scripture in proverbs chapter 13 verse 1 and proverbs chapter 1 verses 8 and 9 so can somebody please read that please for us proverbs 13 1 and proverbs 1 8 and 9 Anyone would like to read Proverbs 13, 1? Proverbs 13, verse. Yes, go ahead, Sobagya. A wise son needs his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Amen. Thank you. Yes, Vinay, go ahead. You can read Proverbs 1, 8 and 9. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. For they will be graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. Amen. Thank you. So this is about, uh, in brief, about how to receive godly counsel. Uh, just a little more that uh, we looked at here and what we had already studied in the previous uh, publication. Okay. We'll move on to chapter 11. If there are any questions, please. Anyone like to ask any questions based on godly counsel? Yes, Pooja. Pooja, you have a question? Uh, no, no, Pastor, thank you. Okay. Any questions on godly counsel? Okay. If not, we will move on to uh, chapter 11, the renewed mind. We already studied about this in, uh, in the previous publication, but we'll just look at a few more things, uh, reiterate a few more things, and then we will move on. Um, now, God uh, guides us. Yes, Shani? So if you're, it seems like to me, when he says counsel from godly parents, but when I'm reading on, it says that... Um, one honorable thing to do is receive counsel from your own parents, especially when they're godly. If they're not godly, then you shouldn't be receiving counsel from them. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, it says, especially, you know, uh, you can receive counsel from your own parents and honorable things, especially when they are uh, godly. It's, so it's added incentive when they are godly. But yes, we can receive counsel from our parents, uh, you know, because they have gone through life, uh, whether they're godly, you know, or the, or the other end or in between, you know, they have gone through life, they have experience uh, in different fields, they have uh, seen life, they have experience and still we can receive from them. So it says it's an honorable thing to receive counsel from godly parents, especially when they are uh, godly. It's an added incentive when they are godly. If your parents are like abusive or not right or just if they're just not right or sick in the mind, why would you receive counsel from them? Yeah, so then we need uh, uh, we have uh, uh, God has given us a mind and we have godly wisdom and discernment. Uh, that's why I said we need to know who we are taking counsel from. And that's important. Uh, and that's it's it's left up to us. We need to discern. 
uh, and God has given us the wisdom, the mind to think, to see, to discern, to understand. And so, you know, we don't, uh, if they're sick in the mind, if they are abusive, then, oh, you know, we don't take their counsel or we don't even go to them for counsel, right? But they might be, uh, you know, abusive, they might be rude, they might be doing things uh, in an ungodly way. But if they are experienced in a specific field, like, for example, with finance or, you know, with uh, automobiles or, you know, or with plumbing or with uh, gardening or with, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, anything to do with, uh, uh, you know, electricity or anything like that, if they are good in that area, why not take uh, you know, guidance and counsel from them in that area of skill. It's not that they are totally useless and, you know, hopeless. Uh, you know, they have skills God has given them. They're not using their life in the right way, living their life in the right way. But we can still take uh, counsel and guidance from them in the areas of their expertise. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Pastor, I can you ask you something? Yes, sure. Please go ahead, Pooja. Uh, sorry, Pastor, my one ma, one my friend is the pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, she believe a sister Roman uh, uh, whole family is the no, Roman Catholic, but she's mm -hmm. believer. Yeah, she she uh, accept Lord Jesus Christ, and Pastor she love one uh, man of God. Yeah, he his ministry he doing the ministry, but she love him, and that uh, that man of God also want to get married married for marriage for he, uh, her and she also. But here, uh, her family, that girl family, not agree because uh, the man of God he paralyzed. That's why he's a paraly uh, paralytic. Yes, 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 yes. Both of leg, he can't mm. walk. Yeah, he's in wheelchair, and but he served the Lord. Okay, he served the Lord. Yeah, uh, his ministry there. He, he served the Lord, but. She want to get married for him, uh, yeah, yes, him. But her, that girl family not agree because he paralyzed and he believe a uh, yeah, Roman. That's why. So she say, if I get married, I will get married for this person only. Otherwise, I'm not married. Oh. And uh, yeah, and she and she pastor she want to serve the Lord. So I tell her, I tell her, if you want to serve the Lord, then you. You pray fast and ask Lord, ask Lord. Then you take the decision. In, even I also saw the way, but she not listening to me. Then, but she get uh, fear uh, for her uh, parents because she say, uh, I can run away. I can run away. I want if I get married, so I get married like you know, like uh, uh, in everybody I call everybody and everything like you know. But some uh, her friend also tell her. You go and run away. <laughs> mm. But she said, no, because I want my parents' blessings, she said. And she, many years now, she waiting for her family. But her family still now, they are not agree. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's something that the parents are worried about her future and, you know, how she will live with this person. Yes. 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 And they are also from different faiths. Uh, but I think if it's from the Lord, you know, she needs to pray. And, you know, if the Lord is guiding them uh, to come together in marriage and, you know, you need to ask, what is a confirmation, whether it's just emotional. Sometimes, you know, uh, it can be sometimes out of sympathy and empathy. We want to get married to uh, somebody else because, they're, uh, you, you know, they're serving the Lord. Uh, it can be just emotional thing that is happening. So you can ask her what has led her to make the decision. If she's got confirmation, you know, she can, you can tell her that, you know, wait on the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, uh, ask God to speak, confirm to you uh, from the scripture. And if it is God's will, you know, um, then he will also bring her parents around uh, to understand and to uh, know. I think that is what you can help her with. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. And she take tension, and she, now she have heart problem, like little bit, not oh. so much, because she yeah, she is like you know taking tension and all. Because 
because he want to get married him and so i think Pooja, uh, if it is god's will there will be complete peace you know uh, we looked at it right one of the promptings of the holy spirit it's like the holy spirit is an empire empire and how is it you know when he brings about peace in our life if there's a lot of hindrances, if there's a lot of confusion, if there's a lot of unrest, if there is, uh, you know, if uh, all of these health issues, we know that if it is from God, there will be peace, even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the trouble and the uh, difficulty. So it's also a way God is speaking uh, through us. If there's no peace, we realize that, you know, it's God telling us it's a red signal. Not don't step in, don't do it. If there's peace and assurance, even in the midst of storm, it's God telling us, hey, go ahead. Yes. I hope that helped, Pooja. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Sure. Yes, Shani. Yes. So I, I, going back to the counsel of um, godly parents, if you have a parent, for instance, like a father who hasn't been in your life and has nothing to do with you, even as an adult, are you because I know you said that even if the if the if the parent is like abusive or sick in the head or whatever, if they're good at I guess whatever get counsel for me, you supposed to try to go and try to seek counsel from this parent, or just only get it from your mother because if the father doesn't want to be bothered with you, there are some men who are like that. Um, what do you do? You just kind of seek it from the mother. Yes. Whoever parent wants to be bothered with you. Yes, Shani. When we're talking about counsel. We are looking at people who are there in our lives, who know us, who, who we have seen their lives, their uh, testimony, the way they have lived their lives. And then we judge whether we can go and take counsel from them. So we just don't go around take counsel from everybody, but we need to identify people and see whether they are in that right position, right place, whether, uh, you know, we can receive counsel from them. And if the pair, one of the parent is absent, we don't know anything about them, no contact, then, you know, you don't have to go and receive counsel from them. You know, you receive from the other parent who has been part of your life. And if that you think that parent is not an expertise in that area, then you go and receive counsel from anyone else in the church or in your workplace or in your family or neighborhood, you know, who you have seen their life in example and receive counsel from them. Okay, I understand. So even though you may know the parent, everything, they're just not around your life, you only get counsel from people who are actually, actually be in terms of in your life. That's what you're saying. Yes, because you need to get counsel from the right people, right? And so you need to look at their life and their testimony and how they live their life so that you know you're receiving the counsel from the right person. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So we'll move on to chapter 11, a renewed mind. We've already studied about this. We'll just go through a little bit uh, uh, more uh, so that we can understand. Uh, we know that there is a natural mind and a renewed mind. A natural mind, you know, is uh, we also know is a carnal or a fleshly mind. And we know that uh, the scripture says, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that a natural mind cannot understand the things of God. So even if God is revealing his plans, his purposes, his will for your life, a natural mind cannot understand because a natural mind cannot understand the spiritual things, cannot understand the things of uh, God. And we also know that a, a, a natural mind or a carnal mind, which is ruled by the flesh, you know, is enmity with God. Romans chapter 8 verse uh, 7. And uh, what is a renewed mind? A renewed mind is a mind, which I already told you in uh, the previous publication when we studied. A renewed mind is a mind, uh, like we read in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. A renewed mind takes on the thoughts and the ways of God. Okay, it's higher ways and higher uh, thoughts. And how do we, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, take on the thoughts and ways of God by just reading and meditating on God's scripture. And when God's word fills our hearts and minds, we are able to take on the higher ways and the thoughts of God because God's word uh, reveals his ways and his um, um, thoughts. Now, some people say that, you know, uh, spiritually minded people or spiritually inclined people say that, you know, uh, when, uh, uh, 
to be spiritually inclined, we should not use our mind. Hey, God created our mind. God designed our mind. He gave us intellectual abilities and God instructs us to use our mind. And some people uh, quote Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 and they say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So they're saying you know, we don't have to use our mind when it comes to spiritual things, when we want to hear from God. Here, this verse is telling us, do not lean on your own understanding. It does not say, do not use your understanding, right? Leaning on your understanding means it's totally depending and trusting completely on your understanding. But to understand the spiritual things, yes, God gave us our mind. He wants us to use our mind. He also helps us to use our mind along with what he speaks to comprehend, understand, discern, you know, but we don't rely totally and trust uh, totally and depend totally on our minds or our logical reasoning, but we also completely and totally depend on the Lord to order our steps and establish our um, ways. Okay. Um, we studied this verse uh, already, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I like to focus on verse 2, where it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of um, God. Okay. Uh, so here it says that, you know, if you want to understand what is the good, perfect, acceptable will of God, we have to have a renewed mind. Only then can we understand uh, the ways and the thoughts of um, God. Okay. Um, and in this aspect, you know, how do we train uh, to know the good, acceptable, uh, perfect will of God? How do we train our minds to be a renewed mind? Uh, let's look at what Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 to 14 says. So can one of you please read Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, please? Also, by this time, you ought to be teachers. <laughs> You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of the righteousness, of, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen. Thank you, Juliana. So here, uh, here we see that, you know, who is a mature person? It talks about here, you know, being a mature person and somebody who is immature, you know, uh, who's only able to take milk and unskilled in the word of God, you know, but we, the word uh, uh, admonishes us, encourages us to be mature people. And who are mature people? Mature people are those who are you know, stayed on God's word, you know, they have their senses, their, you know, their organs of perception, uh, you know, they are exercising, uh, you know, what they are reading in God's word, you know, uh, exercising means training like an athlete, you know, they're training to use God's word in different situations and making the right choices. And they're able to discern using God's word to distinguish and judge, to know what is right and wrong and what is evil. So it's important that we read God's word, we meditate on God's word, we fill our lives, our minds with God's word. And when we do that, we automatically have a renewed mind. A renewed mind is, you know, able to know uh, what choices to make, to know what is right and wrong, what is evil, uh, what is uh, good, and is able uh, to take that um, on. So here, you know, we are uh, uh, encouraged to be mature people, you know, who are uh, taking on God's word and using God's word uh, to live uh, our everyday lives and to discern what is right and wrong and, you know, to um, uh, live God's ways and his uh, thoughts okay we look at ephesians chapter 5 we have already studied this in an earlier chapter but we look at it again here ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 to 10 and verse 17 can somebody read that please for you are once darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of light 
for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Thank you. So we just look at a few words and understand what is the meaning of them. Okay. Uh, it says, you know, we are children of light. And as children of light, we need to live our lives finding out. That means, you know, we have to test, examine, you know, figure out, discern what is acceptable to God. So the process of finding out, you know, uh, when we are able to discern, examine, test, prove, you know, is actually uh, making use of our renewed mind it's developing into our renewed uh, mind so you know uh, god has given us a mind and sometimes he places before us facts information which we need to reason ponder investigate test and validate question and then when we see hey this is right, this is wrong, you know, this is the truth, this is not the truth, you know, uh, then, you know, that's how God helps us to use our mind. And that is how we have a renewed mind, because we're, when we're able to ponder on the facts and the uh, information that we have and our reasoning, we're able to test and validate things, we know what is well pleasing to the Lord, what is right and wrong. And, you know, we can do that. The word acceptable in the Greek you know, means it's fully agreeable or well-pleasing to the Lord. So as believers, we're encouraged to pursue, you know, to discover God's will, but only what is fully agreeable and pleasing to the Lord, well-pleasing to the Lord. And also this verse tells us in, in the verse 17, it says, do not be unwise. That means, you know, do not be without reason or senseless or foolish or stupid, you know, uh, don't act rashly, uh, uh, don't do things without reflecting or intelligence, but, you know, don't be unwise, but we need to understand, discern, know what is God's will and act on it. Okay. And the word understanding here, you know, don't be uh, unwise, but understand what the, 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 the will of the Lord is. The word understanding is means put together. You know, God is telling you something, you know, his scripture is validating that your mind is also being able to test, approve, discern, you know, uh, put together and bring together, you know, make sense. Uh, and then you act on those. But if you think that your mind is telling you something else or the scripture is telling you something else and you're hearing a, a God's voice telling you something else, then you know that, you know, uh, yeah, what you're hearing is not based on what scripture is telling you. Uh, it's not what you have a renewed mind is saying, hey, this is not what God's nature is. This is not what God would tell me to do. This is not righteous. That that means this voice is not from God. It's not from uh, any angel that is guiding me, but it's from a demonic being. And, you know, it's or my own carnal nature that is crying out for attention. And so you, you know, you put that, uh, away. And that's how you'll be able to understand God's will and also receive guidance in various areas of your um, life. So God wants us to live with a renewed mind and make decisions with a renewed mind. And often his guidance comes to people with a renewed mind. So even when you're looking for um, uh, uh, receiving counsel or guidance from people, now, you need to test and approve and see and discern for yourself if they are having a renewed mind. That means, are they walking in God's ways? Are they speaking according to God's ways? Are they living according to God's ways? Then you take counsel from uh, them, okay? Also, a renewed mind is able to think in terms of the supernatural, in terms of miracles in divine impossibilities, which a natural mind cannot think. For a natural mind, all of this is illogical and, you know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, does not fit. But a renewed mind is, uh, for, uh, uh, is a person uh, with a renewed mind, uh, you know, who is naturally supernatural. Okay, so they look at things even the natural realm and they can look at it in terms of spiritual that God can change things. He can do miracles and that uh, it is uh, uh, even though it seems impossible, it is possible by God because of what he has revealed in his word, what he has promised in his word. Okay, so that is about a renewed mind. Any questions? All of you with me, able to understand? 
these are things that we've already spoken about reiterating. Everyone are able to understand? Yes, no. Thank you, Sobhagya. Okay, thank you, Elkana. Thank you, Gerald. Okay. Thank you, Kushpu and Jeevan. Okay, if there are no questions, uh, thank you, Vinay, and the rest. We move on to chapter 12. Yes, Avinash, you have a question? Oh, that was by accident. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to chapter 12, Times and Seasons. We've already looked at this in the previous publication, uh, but we'll just uh, kind of reiterate a few things here. Uh, you know, um, look at what uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 and verse 11 says. Can somebody read that, please? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 11. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so here it says, to everything there is a... A season okay we already saw that God has a plan he's a God of plan order and design he does not do anything randomly or arbitrarily and God works in chronos time and kairos time okay so I like to explain this to us chronos time is chronological time and kairos time is the right time or the God appointed moment or the fullness of Time. So God works in chronological time, chronos time, and kairos time. Kairos means the right time, the fullness of time, or uh, the best uh, uh, moment that God has planned. Now, um, I'll give you an example uh, about chronos time and kairos time. Okay. Now, for example, uh, you know, when did God plan? You know, uh, or when do we read in Scripture God planned that He will send His Son to redeem mankind? Any idea? Genesis 1. Yes, Genesis in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis uh, chapter 3, where we read, God said he was, uh, you know, sending the seed of the woman who would crush the head of the serpent, referring to the Son of God who would come and, you know, uh, would um, uh, disarm every principality and power, even as he dies on the cross. Now, that is an all a period of time from when God revealed this to the time, the Kairos time. It took 4,000 years for Jesus to come from the time when God spoke this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, to when Jesus came uh, into this world. It took 4,000 years. So the 4,000 year period is called as a Kronos time. And when Jesus came is the Kairos time, which is, you know, the God appointed time, the fullness of time. That is what we read in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a, a woman, okay, born into this world, okay. So that is Kronos time, 4,000 years, and the fullness of time, the God-appointed time when God brought about his plan of redemption and um, salvation, okay? Another example I like to give you is about um, when God told Abraham that, you know, your descendants will be as... Um, as uh, slaves in another country. And then, you know, we see that uh, the Israelites, the Hebrew people go to Egypt and they were a slave for 400 years. And, you know, so that was the 400 year time period is a Kronos time. And at the end of that Kronos time, 400 year period, you know, we know that uh, Moses was born. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we read this in Acts chapter 7, you know, the Kairos moment, Moses was born, and how, you know, Moses felt a stirring in his heart, an inner knowing in his heart that, you know, he was raised up to deliver his people uh, from, um, from bondage and from slavery. Another instance I can give you is in the case of the Israelites when they were taken into exile to Babylon. God said, for 70 years you will be exiled, but after the 70 years I will bring you back. And then we see that, you know, after the 70 year period or the nearing the 70 year period, God raises up Cyrus, uh, 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 um, you know, a king who is ungodly, but God 
raises him upstairs his heart up to send back the exiles the israelites to go back to jerusalem to build their own uh, place their homes and to uh, settle down there so the 70 year is the chronos time the fullness of time when god raised up the end of the 70 years cyrus to send back the sun is the kairos movement okay so god works in chronos time and in um, kairos time and uh, we need to you know as people of god we need to discern and understand the times and the seasons that god is taking us through and act accordingly um, and do the things that requires us to do in that season and ask him god in this season, am I positioning myself right at the right time, the right place, so that I can receive the promotion, I can receive guidance, I can receive protection, I can receive your providence that we studied in the previous publication. And God, is this the right time for me to act? Like, um, for example, uh, you know, Scripture tells us in First Chronicles 12, 32, I've already given you this example, the sons of Issachar understood the times, you know, they understood the times. So even we need to understand the times and seasons that God is uh, taking us uh, through and, you know, uh, to discern that and to act accordingly. Look at what Ecclesiastes 8, 5 and 6 says. Can somebody read that, please? Ecclesiastes 8, 5 and 6. He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment, because for every matter there is a time and judgment, though the misery of man increases greatly. Amen. Thank you. So, you know, these scriptures tells us that wise people know the right time to do things, you know, for because for everything there is a right time and a right way to uh, do it. Now, sometimes we can be doing the right thing, but we can be doing it at the wrong time. And that can also get us into trouble. I'll just give you an example, you know, for example, you know, if you're just out of school or just, you know, uh, going through college, you barely finish college and you fall in love and you want to get married. OK, now you're without a job, no means of livelihood. There's no maturity between you and the person that you're, uh, you know, uh, you, you have fallen in love with, but you decide to get married. Now you can go ahead and get married, but that is going to cause a lot of trouble it's a good thing because you know god designed and ordained uh, marriage and he wants us to be married but there is a right time and uh, you know if you do the right thing in the wrong time then that's going to cause problems this is not the right time for you to get married even though it's the right thing because god wants us to get married but this is the wrong time so it's important like i gave you the example also about vinay and the prophecy important for us uh, to know uh, when is the right thing to do the right uh, when is the right time to do the right thing that god is asking us to uh, do okay um, so we must also ask god for his guidance when he wants us to do uh, what he's asking us to do and you know uh, go through the preparation time and wait for the opportune time wait for the kairos moment to step in and get into uh, what he's asking us to do okay um, now there are many times when god will reveal the right time to us uh, you know this might come through any one of the methods that we have discussed whether through scripture the inner voice or the inner witness to the holy spirit uh, and there are times when we recognize the circumstances that god is orchestrating and then we understand the right time has come for us to do it okay i'll just give you an example now for example you're a college student and you know god has put in your heart a desire to start uh you know a business in a certain industry okay now uh what you do as a college student is you don't stop studying and go and start the business but you know you train you you get your experience you get your college degree you want to get you know masters you you get that you you know you're trained and equipped and then when you get your degree you think hey it's not a time for you still feel in your heart it's not a time for you to launch out into business you want to get some experience 
So you get into an organization, you see how, you know, in that specific business, in that specific area, uh, you see how things work, you get additional skills, you build networks, you get more information, more knowledge, uh, more strategies on how to do things, how not to do things. And then, you know, you're sensing that even as you're working there, you know, all this is a Kronos time that God is taking you through. And then, you know, you're coming near to your Kairos time where you see God is orchestrating things. You know, you're ready, you're prepared intellectually, emotionally. You know, uh, you are have built up a good financial uh, stability, um, you know. Also, you have um, applied for a loan, you've got that, or you also see God orchestrating situations of giving you a place or bringing people with the same uh, business sense, same expertise, you know, they're ready to, uh, you know, to invest into your business. And you, you just can discern the times and seasons of how God is orchestrating things. And you know, hey, this is a Kairos moment when I can uh, get into uh, what God is leading me to do. So even as God places in our hearts things that he wants us to do, you know, there's a right time. He takes us to the Kronos time, but there is a God opportune time. There is the fullness of time, the uh, the God-given time when he will take us into and step uh, cause us to step into our God-given calling and purpose. And, you know, he will help us to discern things through the situations that he's orchestrating, the things that he's bringing about in our lives, and we just follow through. Now, one good example that we can look at is about Jesus, how he walked in step and in time with the Father, you know, even in launching out his ministry, uh, you know, when turning water into wine. Uh, we read in John chapter 7, where he says, his time has not yet come to go to Jerusalem. Uh, but later on, he talks about it in John chapter 12. He says, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Also, we see, you know, when uh, Mary and Martha send word to uh, Jesus, who is in another town, to come because their brother Lazarus is very sick. But Jesus doesn't go there. He stays two more days and he goes on the fourth day uh, because he knows that was the right time. That was the Kairos moment when God wanted him to do that miracle. So we also see, you know, when Jesus is teaching about uh, different things, about truth and revelation, you know, he tells them, now, you know, this is not the time. The time will come and you will remember my thing, the things that I've spoken to you. And uh, so even he speaks about the right time for their understanding and the revelations of the truth that he's speaking to them for the right time when they will understand it as well. And also Jesus knew the right time when he would be crucified and he would be glorified, like we read in John chapter 16, verse 32, where he says, indeed, the time has come. Yes, has now come. And, you know, um, and in John chapter 17, verse 1, he says, you know, he looks to the Father and says, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. Okay, so um, we need to act on the right time and do what God is calling us to do. So how do we know what is the right time? We need to ask, is this the right time? Okay, so when you're making decisions, when you're... Uh, you know, uh, making any choice, you're stepping out to do something, ask yourself, is this the correct time? Is this the correct season? And, you know, ask God to guide you and lead you. You know, he can, to the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of, or the audible voice of the Holy Spirit, inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and also through scripture. So through those ways, you can know when is the Kairos moment, the right time. And you can also discern to a renewed mind, whether it is the Kronos time, God is preparing you. And so you go through that preparation process. Okay. Any questions? So chapter 12 about discerning times and seasons. Yes, uh, Shani. So for this last one, sorry, I was trying to take notes in terms of um, acting on the right time and do what God has called you to do. You just basically, so if you want to know if it's the right time and you basically just ask God, am I correct what you said then? Yes, you ask God if this is the right time and God will show you through his word or through the 
inner steering, uh, the inner witness, the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Also, you can identify it through a renewed mind in terms of how God is orchestrating uh, situations and circumstances like I gave through the example of that person who wanted to start a business. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. So Bhagya is, uh, during mentoring, our pastor mentioned that there will be no class next week. So for the whole next week, there are no classes. No, we have classes on Monday and Tuesday. There will be no classes on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because all of us, uh, uh, all of the in-person students and the pastors will be off to our youth missions uh, uh, in another city. But, uh, you know, we will post our lectures. Um, and so on that specific day, whatever is the lectures uh, uh, will be already posted. And so you will use, utilize those three hours of time to just listen to those lectures. Yes. Did that help, Sawagya? Okay. Thank you. So Monday and Tuesday, we have classes. It will all be meant, uh, 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 the admin will send you a detailed email and, you know, there will be no confusions. Yeah. Okay, there are no questions. We'll move on to chap. Uh, yes, Shani. So, are you going to be recording the lecture for next week? Is that what you're saying and posting it up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yes, Pooja, you have a, a hand up. You have a question, or is it just by accident? Okay. Yeah, no, uh, no, okay. Uh, we'll move on to. Okay, yes, Sri Raj. Ma'am, uh, actually, yesterday's, I think, uh, the materials we haven't received. So I just want to... Uh, what materials? The study materials yesterday. The uh, uh, videos, video clips. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll inform the person in charge and let him know that. Yeah, Who please, ma'am. That will be a great help because I was actually sick. Mm -hmm. So I didn't okay. attend it. Actually. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell him that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very kind of you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, we just have some more time, uh, about nine minutes. We'll start uh, chapter 13. Okay, this is also something that we have uh, learned. So we just go through it quickly. You know, God orchestrates circumstances and situations in our life. Uh, you know, and this could be uh, situations uh, that he orchestrates by opening unusual doors of opportunity, favor, access to people, new contracts, uh, and other things that God causes to, you know, to uh, bring in our lives, circumstances. And through this, you know, uh, you know, he can get us to fulfill his plan and purpose. He can guide us into these things. And when God does such things, you know, no one can stop him or prevent him, you know, and he can do amazing things more than what we can even ask, think, or imagine. He can do what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, or what people could even um, imagine, okay? So God uh, orchestrates divine uh, situations and uh, you know, circumstances in our life, but we need to be aware, we need to be um, vigilant, we need to be attentive, you know, um, you know, so for example, uh, if you're praying about your professional uh, career, and you're asking God for direction on what to do, you know, uh, uh, you just don't wait and sit uh, for the job to come. Uh, and, you know, uh, but you need to prepare, right? You need to build your skills. You need to look for jobs. You need to apply for uh, jobs. You need to look at, uh, you know, good jobs that you are looking for, what is within your skills. Um, and you need to attend those interviews. So you prepare for uh, interviews. Now, all of these things God cannot do for you, right? You need to do for yourself, but you can trust that God will order your steps to get into the right job and right position. So after you looked at uh, the jobs that you are, uh, you know, interested in your field, in your area, uh, there's good scopes in those jobs, you attend the interviews. And for example, you receive um, you know, a job offer, and it's a great opportunity. It fits well with your skills, your capabilities, and also there's a good pay package. Everything seems fine. Then what do you do? 
you know, you consider what we have studied earlier, you know, you, uh, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, to the renewed mind, uh, ask God to speak to you to the scripture. You know, I remember uh, one of the testimonies that I read from one of our APC church members, he got a job and, you know, got three jobs, uh, all three good offers, one stood out. And when he read scripture, you know, it was not uh, that job that he had to apply for and he was not able to understand the scriptures but you know but uh, uh, it was uh, when God gave him more clarity with other scripture he realized that the one that stood out was not the one that he was supposed to take he was supposed to take another job offer that he had to take and he took that and how you know uh, excited he is that he stepped into the right thing and he was just um, uh, he wrote all the scripture passages how God spoke to him it was wonderful just reading that but uh, how clearly God guided him and uh, led him through just scripture passages to get into the right job and how uh, excited he is and happy he is to be uh, there okay so um, you know even as uh, uh, you've got the job opportunity you know you have got the job offer it's important that you ask God that you wait upon him uh, you know um, and you know if uh, if you think that job is not right unless there is something unethical that is required of you you know or you don't get a clear witness in your inner spirit there is no peace that is coming there and there's restlessness there's no joy that means God is saying hey don't take that up then you give that up but you know if not you can proceed with that uh, job so we see that you know God has ordered your steps you know he's divinely orchestrated things giving you divine favor in situations and circumstances but you had to do your part you had to do your um, job okay um, and also it's very important to keep in mind that not every circumstances and situations that comes about in our life is God's doing, is God's work. You know, sometimes we hear people saying, you know, God is in control. If it's God's will, it will happen. Um, you know, um, um, so it's a, it's a means that people can just use, you know, to do whatever comes in their life or whatever situations. They think all of these situations coming from God, so just do it. No, that's not true. You know, sometimes the devil can also work. He can also bring in hindrances and he can also bring in other things that can, you know, uh, uh, be a hindrance, can also kind of divert our attention from God's purposes. Uh, and so we need to be very, very uh, careful. And that those situations we need to be discerning. That's when a renewed mind comes in place. That's when we need to wait on scripture, wait on the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And when we know that these hindrances are not from God, it's from the evil one he's causing these hindrances this disturbances what do we do we speak to that storm uh, we speak to those mountains those giants and cause them to move we declare god's word we declare god's promises we speak and uh, to those storms and those mountains those giants that are a hindrance and we do not accept that as god's will for example for doctor says you know, this is the situation. There's nothing that can be done in your life. We don't take it because we know there's a God of impossibilities. He's a God who can heal, you know. So we stand on God's promises. We declare God's promises till we see the healing um, happen. Now, you know, sometimes the situations are not from, not every situation or hindrance is from the devil, but it can be also our wrong choices and decisions that we take, uh, you know, we reap what we sow, you know, and we face the consequences for our own wrong choices and actions. And we can't blame that on God or the devil. We need to take responsibility for our own consequences of our own choices and, you know, uh, you know, ask God for forgiveness, just trust in him and uh, just, you know, um, realign our wills and our uh, uh, lives and submit to his and yield and submit to him in obedience to him, okay? Um, while yes, God works and orders circumstances and situations in our life, we need to know that everything is not from God. We must discern and act with um, wisdom, okay? And we need to confront and overcome what is of the enemy, okay? We'll stop here. We just have two minutes. Any questions? Yes, Sridhar, do you have your hand up?
Any question? No? Pastor, uh, I want to buy the book in FEC Bible College. We have the books, uh, many uh, many books now, I see. Uh, yes. It's very beautifully a powerful book. So I think to buy the book. Uh, you don't have to buy it. It's all. Uh, can you please? Uh, yeah, thank you. You don't have to buy those books. You can just uh, please write to uh, our publications department or you can call up our church office and, you know, you can just tell them the list of books that you want and they will just post it to you. Yes, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, Shani. So if somebody's in a situation, not every situation is from the devil, somebody's own doing. If they're in a situation that's their own doing, um, they could just ask for forgiveness and then God will just kind of guide them on the right path from that from that point. Yes. Uh, not just ask for forgiveness, but also realign our will to God's will. Just, sub, uh, you know, yield in obedience and submission uh, to him. Say, God, I'm, you know, I'm ready to do what you're asking me to do. Just guide me and lead me. Yes. Okay, thank you. And, and how are we, um, since next week is going to be, you're going to record it, um, are you going to post it by next Tuesday, Wednesday, in terms of for next week's lecture, since, since we won't be in person? Yes, it'll be posted on Tuesday, I think, yes. How are we supposed to ask questions? I mean, what is there going to be a time the following week where we're going to ask questions? That's what I want to know. Yes. So uh, if you have any questions, then you can post them in the, uh, in the Google Classroom and I will answer them during the course of the week. Or uh, if you still feel that question is unanswered, you can ask me when we meet the following week. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Elkana, you want to say something? Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, okay. Uh, if uh, what can someone do if you uh, mistakenly you have taken a wrong step before God? Sorry, can you repeat that slowly again so I can uh, understand you? Okay, I said, what can somebody do? What is a remedy for someone who have take a, taken a wrong step before God? Okay, what is a remedy if somebody has taken a wrong step? Then you know, you, like I said, you just Come back to God, tell him that you're sorry, that you jumped ahead, you moved ahead, you did not wait for his timing, his uh, leading, and uh, just ask God, God, what do I do now? How do I put things right? Please help me, guide me, lead me, uh, teach me, uh, you know, show me through your word, you know, and help me, God. And yes, just follow through in what he's telling you to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining class. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you week after next. Have a blessed week ahead and blessed day. God bless. Thank you.